Praise the name of Jesus Christ, God's servant, and uh, great warriors of intercessors for revival, men and women that God is raising in the words of director into becoming God's generals to the glory of God. Thank you so much for your patience in the spirit. Thank you so much for staying in prayer. I know we've been having a, the all week conference all the way from Sunday, last Sunday evening to today, Friday with Bishop of the Apostolic Faith, Bishop Gatimo. And uh, we thank God even for the grace that has taken us through the night watch. I am sure that you have been in prayer and God has specifically visited you as you sought his face in prayer. We thank God for the word that we shared and the word that Rev. Gold also spoke to us. And now we want to climax the entire of this week. The Bible says then in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8 that finishing, this is NLT version, finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. Oh my, my, my. I wished I could read it again in another version that I, I, I feel like I want to read it in. Probably NIV if possible. Uh, he says, yes, the end of a matter is better than its beginning. And patience is better than pride. King James talks about Patient in the spirit is better than pride in the spirit. 
The end of a matter is better than its beginning. I tell you, God's children, tonight there is something better for you, even as we come to conclusion of this service. I want you to now get yourself ready. Go, I mean, what invite somebody to watch with us. Remember, this time we are live on Facebook. It's not just on you, we are live on Facebook. So invite your friend, send a link to them once again. Let's conclude this powerful week together. And I'm sure that there is something better for us. Now, in the wedding of Cana of Galilee, the Bible talks about Jesus bringing out a better wine than the one that was there. And the owner of the wedding asked, why wouldn't you have to wait to the last minute to bring better wine? I want you to know there is some better wine for us in this last session. Please set your heart and may God give you a spirit of renewal. May your mind and your heart be refreshed to receive from the man of God of this hour in the name of Jesus. And so, having said all that, tonight or this morning, it's now past, just past 2.50 a.m. in the morning. The man that is coming to conclude and pray for us is none other than our own director, the director of NPC. A man that God gave this vision, and this vision has grown and has brought us all now together. We are now partakers of what just began with one man. We are now partakers of the same. And I want to say that this man of God, our director, God has surely given him some level of grace. It's a grace that I admire. He is my, a close friend to me, a close associate in the work of ministry, but he still carries some level of grace that I usually admire. Oh, how I pray and desire that as he concludes for us today, the grace that is working in him will also come on, he, on us powerfully. You know, Paul the Apostle said that he was able to achieve a lot. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15 verse 10, he says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No. I worked under than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Our director, God has given him a level of grace. And the grace that is upon his life is not without effect. The effect of that grace is what we now see. The Mombasa conference, that was powerful. The Maseno, the Nairobi conference that has been working and be, been a blessing to the lives of almost every individual that came into contact with the conference. I am sure that grace, the effect of that grace is what we see now. And it's my desire and prayer that as he prays for us, as he speaks the final remarks to us, the same grace will jump on us. Let me tell you how to receive grace. You receive the grace from a man of God by admiring, if you can only admire, if you desire it. If you see grace and you desire the same grace, if you desire and connect with that man, the same grace can jump on you. So tonight, as God's servant is coming, my prayer is that we are not just going to hear with our outside ears but our inner ears will listen friends movement put your hands together even as god's servant is coming reverend peter Bogwa. amen and amen god bless you amen 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 a good morning good afternoon it all depends on Unawachi Sangapi. There are those of you probably from the US. It could be a night for you, I'm not sure. Those of us from Kenya, it's a morning and a very good morning to all of us. 
Mungu abariki sana for taking your time to kick that blanket away. Ukainuka ukakuja kwa hii midnight watch. I want to thank God so very much for the ministration of the word kwa hii session ambayo ni ya mwisho kupitia kwa watumishi wake Reverend Julius Chabari and Reverend Paul God. Thank you so much servant of God for a job well done. May the Lord richly bless you and all of us that are keeping watch. I say a very big thank you to you. One thing that I can say with certainty of heart, mind and spirit. Our labor in the Lord will never be in vain. God has got a mechanism through which he will reward you. And I say again, God has a mechanism of rewarding each one of us. So let us continue being diligent in the things of God. We should never be casual on the things of God. Anyone who puts his hand on the plow should never turn back. Even when challenges come your way, ensure that you've got some hidden energy in your spirit to continue moving on. One of the things that I've come to learn is that Shetani wanatumia the spirit of discouragement even after a whole week of prayer and atokea tu anaku discourage just to kind of let you know that whatever you have been doing is a waste of time or whatever but believe you me whatever you have been doing is not a waste of time it's a massive investment in the kingdom of God and the impact that your prayers is making is not just for your generation it's a generational impact it's not just a local impact it's a regional impact it's a country impact it's a global impact let's continue doing what we are doing and i'm sure the lord will richly bless us just allow me before i can share a short word allow me because this will be what i would consider the last address ya ku climax the Mombasa prayer conference just allow me to say i'm so grateful to all of you delegates for finding time to attend this virtual conference mungu abariki sana i want to appreciate so very much all the ministers who have given us a word and actually not just a word but a very timely word inspired of the holy spirit we have been built we have been challenged we have been encouraged we are now much more sharper even as we engage in prayer believing god for an outpouring of the holy spirit in our time i don't have the time to mention each one of them by name but believe you me i say a very big thank you to all the ministers at the same time i would want to appreciate our praise and worship team both in Nairobi and in the western region again for doing a superb job my god whom i serve we will reward you in a very big way i also want to thank god because of our media team the tech team that has worked over time to ensure that the transmissions they get to us at the right time they have given us quality and actually a very high quality so the tech team the sound team the media team a lot of appreciation from our heart and i pray that god will reward you in a very big way i also want to appreciate all of you for supporting this conference with your finances i say a very big thank you very big thank you actually let me say this god gave me a shock of the year 
because on Saturday, as we were gearing up for this conference, I was invited by a pastor and his leaders, and the conversation was how they would support NPC. And in my mind, what I would actually say, my own very limited way of thinking, I thought probably they would give me a thousand shillings, 10,000 shillings, 20,000 shillings to support the ministry. But what happened is that the man of God stood up and said, God has spoken to them to support NPC. And he was handing over the gift that God has instructed them to give to NPC. And the man of God got into his pocket and he gave me a car key. And in all my years of ministry, 17 years, 20 years of ministry, I have never ever received anything like that to support the work of God. And man of God, thank you so much for the gesture. And I pray that God will continue to bless you. And all of you, whatever you have given, whatever sacrifice you have made, Mungu wabariki sana. And finally, as we climax this conference, we will still continue with what we call the NPC Revival Network. This is a journey that we got instructions from God for seven months of deep prayer and intercession for revival. So we will still continue with our program under the leadership of our sister Anne and sister Mary Richu and Pastor Lucy Muma and Mom Bishop Linda Mark. This is a team of coordinators. They have worked round the clock to ensure that we have kept the fire of revival aflame. So if you want to be part of it, and I would really encourage that you be part of it, kindly contact any of the four people that I have talked of, or you can even contact us through the NPC line, which I'm sure you already have, and we'll be able to link you up into this kind of a river, a fire that is burning in a very big way. And we shall be climaxing the prayers on the 31st of December, 2020. So Mungu awabariki sana na wasaidie. As we climax the Mombasa Prayer Conference, and as we observe the Midnight Watch, it is very clear that something inside of us needs to be activated. I have borrowed these words from Reverend Muma, who shared with us this morning that something just needs to be activated in us and we will actually be able to see this revival that we've been talking about being a reality in our time and in our generation. Now quickly, I want to share with us six things that we must know and pray for. I'll say that one more time. As a climax of the Mombasa Prayer Conference, I am sharing on a very simple topic entitled Six Things That We Must Know. And after knowing, we pray about them. We pray about them. I will quickly mention them. Then after that, I will discuss each one of them point by point and I will be able to keep the time that is available to us. The first one is, give me the ability to detach myself from the crowds. Number one, God, it's like a prayer. God, give me the ability to detach myself from the crowds. Number two, God, Help me to climb higher and stay there. Number two, God, help me to climb higher and stay there. And number three, God, help me not to abuse the place, I mean the place of prayer. Number three, God, Help me not to abuse the place of prayer. Number four, God, give me the power, and I say again, the power 
to perform unusual miracles in our time. God, give me an, I mean, the power to perform unusual miracles in our time. Number five, God, help me know that you have called and appointed me. Irrespective of my shortcoming, help me know and understand that indeed it is me you have called and appointed for the assignment. And the last one is what I'm calling refuse to accept what they are calling the new normal. Refuse to accept this new word that is being circulated left and right and everybody feels like mm, what a wonderful name let me tell you that statement is not from the bible that statement is not from the church we must refuse to accept this thing that they call the new normal shall we pray and then get into the discussion of the six points lord jesus i bless you and i exalt your holy name thank you for the opportunity to come and share your word with your servants i pray that the holy spirit of god will rest upon me even as i speak forth your word and I yield myself to the grace of God this hour. And Lord, I pray, give me utterance to speak with clarity that which you have put in my spirit. I pray for all my viewers. I pray for all the listeners that this word will not be a package of information but it shall be a package of transformation in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that this word will come forth to all of us as clear oracles of the Most High God. We give you praise and we give you honor. Even as I pray that none of us will be distracted I also pray that this word will not be stolen from our hearts by the enemy. I give you praise and I give you honor. For this I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I hope you are keeping yourself warm, the midnight watch. And at the same time, probably you got... A glass of hot water just to ensure that you keep yourself very alert as we continue with this teaching that will help us to pray don't forget it's about knowing so that we are triggered to prayer let me tell you prayer without knowledge in what God is saying is actually not prayer those are just good recitations those are just good statements that you are making. Prayer, as I say from day one, must be anchored in what God is saying. So point number one, which is a prayer. Oh God, give me the ability to detach myself from the crowds. Let's read our Bible in the book of Luke chapter number nine, verse number 18. We'll just read one verse. Luke chapter number 9, verse number 18. The Bible says, One day Jesus left the crowds to pray alone. Take note of the word crowds. Not a crowd, but crowds. For what business? 
for prayer alone. But of course, the Bible continues on to say that the disciples were also with him. I'm interested with line number one. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our model, our mentor, the image at which we work towards becoming, there's something that's so unique we learn about Jesus that not just once but so many times Jesus would detach himself from the crowds for the business of prayer and meditation in the word of God Jesus would deliberately Detach himself, detach himself for the business of prayer. Now, he detaches himself not just from a crowd, but from crowds, crowds. Now, if we want to make impact in our time, and I believe we want to make some serious impact. Then, one thing we must do, we must have a habit of detaching ourselves from the crowds so that we can be alone with God for two things, for prayer and for the Word. I say again, for prayer and the word now let me say this crowds the crowd that i'm talking about they may not necessarily be evil crowds they may be very good crowds maybe those are church meetings or church committees or maybe family gatherings all those manner of crowds and i pray that the holy spirit of god will start will stir up your spirit to get an understanding of the crowds within your life that you need to detach yourself so that you can have a serious time of prayer and the word i know sometimes we can be too busy running up and down Moving from one committee to another. Moving from one crusade to another. Moving from one revival meeting to another. Now, if we are going to make impact, we've got to learn from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus had to leave the business of raising the dead. He had to leave the business of healing the sick. He had to leave the business of opening the blind eyes. For what business? For the business of being with God alone. If you have never gotten to that level where you can detach yourself, I invite you this day I invite you this hour, make an intercession for yourself. And the prayer is, oh God, help me that I can detach myself from the crowds so that I can be able to pray and to read and study the word of God. If you have never locked yourself in a house for a whole day in prayer, try this time round. If you have never taken two, three days of prayer and locked yourself either in a church or in a closet of your choice or in a prayer mountain of your choice, it's an invitation that I'm making to you this very early hour of the day if we have to make impact in our time. Sorry, time is not so much on our end. Let's go to point number two. And point number two is a prayer. Oh God, help me to climb higher and stay there. 
Exodus chapter number 24, verse number 9 through verse number 18. I will read it very fast and just pick up a line or two. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel climbed up the mountain. Take note of those names one more time. Give me that one. This Moses, this Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and then 70 elders of Israel climbed up the mountain. The next verse. There they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet there seemed to be a surface of brilliant blue lapis lazul, as clear as the sky itself. Eleven. Eleven. And though these nobles of Israel gazed upon God, he did not destroy them. In fact, they ate a covenant meal, eating and drinking in his presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain. Moses is already on the mountain, but God is still making an invitation to him to climb up higher. Stay there, that's what the Bible says, and I will give you the tablet of stone on which I have inscribed the instructions and commands so that you can teach the people. Take note of that word, is climb up and stay there. Climb up higher and stay there. Many times we climb up. But we are so much in a hurry to come down. The Bible is giving us some advice. Climb up higher and stay there. Verse, the next verse, thank you so much. So Moses and his assistant Joshua set out and Moses climbed up the mountain of God. Just take note of this, that the 70 elders are not at this level now. But this is a level for Moses and Joshua, his assistant, who are climbing up, not just any mountain, but the mountain of God. Next verse. Moses told the elders, stay here and wait for us until we come back. Aaron and, and, and Har are here with you. If anyone has a dispute while I am gone, consult with them. Then Moses climbed up the mountain, my God, and the cloud covered it. The cloud covered that mountain as Moses was climbing up the mountain. Next verse. And the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. My God. On the seventh day, the Lord called Moses oh, from inside the cloud. What did God do? Verse number 17. To the Israelites at the foot of the mountain, the glory of the Lord appeared at the summit like a consuming fire. Then Moses disappeared into the cloud as he climbed higher up the mountain. Don't forget, it is God who is inviting him to climb higher. And as he climbed higher, the Bible says he disappeared into the cloud as he climbed higher up the mountain. The Bible says he remained on the mountain. Oh my God. What did he do? He remained on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. He remained. Next verse. Okay, that, thank you. Verse number 18. Thank you so much. So this man of God called Moses, we can learn a lot from him. But unfortunately, time is not available on our end. But I see a man who is so desperate for the glory of God, so desperate to connect with God, to a point whereby he is moving from one level of the mountain to another. He is going higher and higher and higher. And as he went higher, the Bible says at some point, Moses disappeared in the cloud. And when he disappeared in the cloud, the Bible says 
he remained there for 40 days and 40 nights. Probably when we get to heaven, we will actually be able to know exactly what is this that Moses was receiving or tapping from God when he disappeared in that cloud. I don't have the time, but let me tell you this. I believe in those 40 days and 40 nights, Moses was receiving the pattern on how to do things right. I believe when he disappeared on that, in that cloud, Moses was receiving the revelation on how to write the book of Genesis. I believe Moses was receiving instructions on how to write the book of Leviticus. Moses was receiving the pattern on how to lead the children of Israel to the promised land. Saints of God, if we've got to make impact in our generation, then we must not be afraid afraid of climbing the mountain higher and higher and the moment we get there don't be in a hurry to come down no you don't have to be in a hurry to come down those people who are always in a hurry to come down there are certain things that they don't receive from the almighty my prayer is as i climb higher in prayer as I climb higher in fasting, as I climb higher in seeking the face of God, I shall remain there, tapping, receiving revelations of the word of God. My prayer for you and for myself, do not have an allergy for mountains. It is on the mountains where we receive mysteries of the kingdom of God. Pastor, I know you are there. You don't know what is next with your ministry. The advice that I can give you before you can run up and down looking for counsel from different people, I advise you, take a day, take a week and climb up on the mountain by yourself and wait for divine instructions as, we were pre as they were presented to us on Monday by Reverend Opondo in the morning glory. Divine instructions. You don't pick divine instructions from a matatu. You don't pick divine instruction from the marketplace. You receive and tap into divine instructions when you climb higher and higher until you disappear. Let me tell you, every time you disappear from the faces of men, when you disappear from the crowds, you appear before God. I wish we had the time to talk more. Let's go to part number three. Point number three. Point number three is, help me, there's a prayer, God, help me not to abuse the place of prayer. Luke chapter number nine, verse number 28. This place is getting hot, my God. Luke chapter number nine, verse number 28 through verse number 36. I hope our delegates from Siaya, you are there. Delegates from Mombasa, we want to hear your voice. Delegates from Gedongori, we want to hear you say something. Delegates from Kajiado, we want to hear you say something. This is a midnight watch and every serious soldier must be awake for divine instructions. Luke chapter number 9 verse number 28 until verse number 20 and until verse number 36 and the point that we are we are pushing across or the point that the Holy Spirit is pushing across to us is that God help us not to abuse the pray, the place of prayer about 8 days later Jesus took Peter John and James up on a mountain to pray on a mountain to pray don't forget uh, Bishop Gatimu this morning he spoke about this verse so I love the way the Holy Ghost is just connecting things verse 29 and as he was praying as he was praying not as he was going to the place of prayer no 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 but as he was praying something unique happened the Bible says the appearance of his face was transformed saints of God every time we engage in prayer change is taking place even when you don't realize 
something beautiful is happening when you pray when you pray and i encourage us to continue in prayer because as we pray we are being changed we are being transformed and this is exactly what was happening with jesus as he prayed his appearance of his face was actually changing his clothes became dazzling white verse number 30 suddenly two men moses and elijah appeared and began talking with jesus my god they were glorious to see and they were speaking about his exodus from this world which was about to be fulfilled in jerusalem peter and the others had fallen asleep where are they sleeping where are these men sleeping they are sleeping in the place of prayer jesus is receiving transformation but these guys are fast asleep look at what happens when they woke up they saw jesus glory and the two men standing with him next verse as moses and elijah were starting to leave peter not even knowing what he was saying blurted out master it is wonderful for us to be here let's make three shelters as memorials look at this man this man is talking about creating memorials in the place of prayer the place of prayer is not a place of memorials this is not where you put up images for people to remember about you a place of prayer is not a place of memorials it's a place of putting up an altar and a sacrifice it's a place of saying this far the lord has brought us and if you read from the other gospel you'll actually come to learn that before these guys woke up there was already a conversation between jesus moses and elijah but these guys did not pick the conversation they did not pick the conversation now i know some of us would actually say pastor is talking about the physical sleep partially yes but actually my biggest challenge is about spiritual slumber when you are expected to pray you are fast asleep when the church is expected to pray the church is fast asleep when me as a pastor i'm expected to pray i'm too busy not to find time to connect with God in the place of prayer. When we fail to do that, then we are abusing the place of prayer. If you read again verse number 28, please give me verse number 28 one more time. You'll actually see the very clear instructions of Jesus. About eight days later, Jesus took Peter, John, and James up on a mountain not to sleep but to pray they were taken to the mountain to pray but the question is did they pray every time you get into a place of prayer pray don't complain every time you get into a place of prayer pray don't read your newspaper when you get into a place of prayer that is not the time to get into the facebook page that is not the time to check what messages are coming via whatsapp or what messages are coming to you via tw twitter it's a place of prayer it's a place of connecting between humanity and divinity and when there's that connection what we can only receive is change and transformation i decree change and transformation in the name of jesus i pray going forward that every individual who is hearing 
this message, we will never ever abuse the place of prayer. As we pray, we receive change. As we pray, we receive change. As we pray, we receive change. So continue praying. And before long, people will actually say, wow, his face is changing. His clothes are changing. His countenance is actually changing. That happens in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. Point number four. Point number four. Point number four. We are talking about God. Give me the power. Hey, to perform unusual miracles. I'm not in the business of asking for money to perform miracles. No, no, no. You will understand as I explain this point why we need to ask this prayer. We need to make this prayer. So open for me, please open for me. I know my time is really running out, but I'm just about to wind up. I'm really sorry. I'm just about to wind up. It's just getting hot. And of course, you know, after this, you're only going to bed. So just give me a bit of time. Uh, Acts chapter 19, verse number 11 through verse number 12. This again is a scripture that has been quoted in this Mombasa prayer conference by different men of God. Just to mention a few, Bishop Wanderi quoted this scripture. Bishop Edwin Thor, my daddy, he quoted the same scripture. And I believe there is something so unique about this verse. The reason why the man of God, Paul, was able to penetrate the city of Ephesus, even though there was a powerful influence of a goddess called Diana, and also called in other words, on other translation, Artemis. He, that goddess was actually controlling the entire city. But this man of God called Paul, he walked into that city with power anointed of God and no devil could stand his way he was able to perform unusual miracles that how was he able to do it look at verse number 11 the Bible says God gave Paul the power so if God gave Paul the power that basically means he can also give you and me the power to perform unusual miracles I decree unusual miracles. I decree one more time the power to perform unusual miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Now the Bible says in verse number 12, it gives us a few examples of those unusual miracles. Some of the things that this man was doing, God was helping him do. Even Jesus himself did not do that, some of these things. The Bible says, when handkerchiefs, hey, kitamba, ambao ni kutoa jasho, or aprons that had merely, check now what, had merely touched his skin, were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases. My God. Ooh. And evil spirits, we are expelled. Now, let me tell you, the God of Paul is my God and he is your God. He is not a God of partiality. He is the one who has called us at a time like now. We need to believe him for the power to perform unusual miracles for his glory. For his glory. If there would be anyone sick who is listening to this message, anyone who is sick watching this video, by the authority in the name of Jesus, I release the grace of healing wherever you are. I decree in the name of Jesus, wholeness in your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your foot in the name of Jesus. Whether people call it HIV positive, whether people would call it pneumonia, whether people are going to call it COVID-19, I command every sickness to disappear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, saints of God, 
this unusual power to perform miracle it is not something that is going to come upon you and then you realize oh all of a sudden i've got the power to perform miracles no 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 this is the power you'll actually discover in your life as you continue to do what god has called you to do god has called you to lay your hands upon the sick and the sick will receive their healing so as you continue doing these things you'll actually realize within yourself there is something that God has done this, an activation the Holy Spirit has done in your life. Hallelujah. Hey, this is getting sweet for me. May the Lord release this grace to perform unusual miracles. Unusual miracles in Mombasa. Unusual miracles in Kilifi. Unusual miracles in Nairobi. Unusual miracles in the nations of the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's get to point number five. Don't worry, we are just about to finish. I know my time is up. But just a few more minutes and I'll be done. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! My God, I give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter number 16, verse number 9. Mark chapter 16, verse number 9. And the, the item here is, Oh God, help me know that you have called me and appointed me. Help me. I know sometimes people live in a way that almost can tell that we are not very sure who has called us and who has appointed us. Let me tell you, Jesus has called you. He has appointed you in a time like now. I know some people would say, Pasi, but I have so many shortcomings. What I can tell you, just keep quiet. Jesus knows you better than yourself. It's not about your shortcomings. It's not about your finances. It's not about your background. It's about the agenda of God upon your life. Every human being that I have seen in the Bible that was ever called by God to do something, they all had shortcomings. Because this world is not a world of perfect people. God does not call perfect people because perfect people are not available. I say again, perfect people are not available. You have your own shortcomings. You have issues with yourself. Believe you me that God has called you and appointed you into the work of the ministry. When we say that people are going to raise the dead, I'm actually talking about you. You will raise the dead. You will clean the lepers. I'm not asking whether you've got a Form 4 certificate. That's not important for God. I'm not asking whether you are a degree holder. All that is required now is that divine enablement by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because this generation must know there's a God in heaven. So the Bible says, Hallelujah, my God. After Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning, my God, I'm doing this well seated. If I was actually standing, I, I, I'm sure people will be getting me from the road. This is just... After Jesus rose, from where? From the dead early on Sunday morning. The first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene. The woman from whom he had cast out seven demons. Ten. Ten. We are going up to verse number, verse number 20. She went to the disciples who we are grieving. This is Mary Magdalene. She has gone to the disciples. Look at what the disciples are doing. They are grieving and weeping. The disciples, what are they doing? They are grieving and weeping. And told them what had happened. Next verse. But when she told them that Jesus was alive. And she had seen him. What happened? They did not believe her. Disciples of Jesus, they did not believe that Jesus is alive. They did not believe the message from Mary Magdalene. Even though Jesus had spoken to them about his resurrection. Verse number 12. After what he appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem into the country. What happened? Verse number 13. They rushed back to tell the others, but no one believed them. 
So, two occasions, the disciples, men who were so close to Jesus, they were actually not believing that he was alive. Next, next verse. Verse 14. Still later, <laughs> he appeared to the 11 disciples. Now, this time round, they are not grieving and mourning. They are now eating. Aye, what a change. From grieving and mourning, then all of a sudden, eating. But in between, there is a small menu that is called not believing that Jesus is alive. So when Jesus got in there, the Bible says he rebuked them to their stubborn for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had been raised from the dead. Verse 15, very astonishing statement. And then he told them, after the rebuke, <laughs> after the rebuke for not believing that Jesus was alive. Now, I thought in my own simple mind and imagination that these guys would have been sent away from that church. Or these people would probably would have been reprimanded and told you guys are not fit for ministry. But after two occasions of not believing that Jesus was alive, and again after the rebuke from Jesus Christ, the next statement from Jesus is, Go! into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. If Jesus could entrust the great commission with unbelieving disciples, then believe you me, you are wired for great things. You are appointed and called by God even at a time like now. If Jesus could dare and trust the mandate of soul winning to 11 unbelieving disciples. Oh my God. Unbelieving. Guys who are moving from mourning, mourning and weeping to eating. You don't see them in prayer. No, no, you really don't see them. But finally, Jesus is entrusting them with the ministry. Let's see what happens. Verse number 16. And Jesus says, anyone who believes is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. 17, this miraculous sign will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. And they will speak in new languages. Next verse. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. And finally, when the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them he was taken up into heaven and sat down in place of god in place of honor at god's right hand i think let's go to the next verse and the disciples ah and the disciples which disciples the unbelieving disciples in two separate occasions they could not believe that jesus was alive but after the commission, they went everywhere and preached. And the Lord walked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. So if the 11 unbelieving disciples preached everywhere, made disciples everywhere, and the Lord walked through them. And he confirmed his word with signs and wonders. Don't write yourself off. I say again, don't write yourself off. God has zoomed on you. The camera of Jesus, the camera of the Holy Spirit is currently zooming on you and God is banking on you for ministry at a time like now and again if Jesus could entrust the ministry 
to 11 unbelieving disciples. Oh, God has called you into the ministry. You know, if it were me, and I realize that these guys are not believing that I, I am alive, probably if I were Jesus, what I would have done is to extend my stay and say, I will not come to heaven daddy. Watch Akwanza ni shugulikie the unbelief of these guys. But check. Jesus at a couple akushugulikia after the rebuke he is commissioning them. And after the commission he is going to heaven. And after heaven, the disciples are now running up and down preaching the word of God. The Holy Spirit is not writing you off. The Holy Spirit is not rejecting you. Therefore you can't afford to reject yourself. God is wiring you for great things. Yes, God is wiring you not just for villages, but for nations in the name of Jesus Christ. You plus Jehovah, you are a great army. Yes, you are a great army. The anointing you are not buying from the supermarket. The anointing is being released by God himself. And this can only happen when we are able to detach ourselves from the crowds and get into the place of prayer alone. And then we don't abuse the place of prayer. And when we are there climbing up the mountain and disappearing to the highest level of the mountain, we are going to receive new grace for ministry. I, 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 I pray that each one of us will receive new grace for ministry in the name of Jesus. The end of Mombasa Prayer Conference is actually not the end of everything. It's actually the beginning of the impact of what you have received by the help of God. I believe there are some people who are getting so psyched up in their spirit to a point whereby even when I'm done with this meeting, they are not going to sleep. They are going to get into a corner in their house and pray waiting on God, seeking God, more grace upon my life, more grace upon my life. Let me go to the last one, last one, last one. And that is, we refuse the new normal. We refuse the new normal. We refuse the new normal. Oh, Rama Shaka, Rama Zekayanda. There's a new concept that the world is bringing into the church. And this concept is, we have to accept the new normal. Now, let me tell you this, saints of God. As far as I'm concerned, I will comply with the guidelines because I don't want to be on the bad side of the law. However, I am not accepting that this is a permanent state of our nations in the name of Jesus Christ. How can I accept what they call the new normal? Because the new normal means children are not in school. The new normal means you cannot come to church with your children as long as they are below, 18, um, below 13 years. The new normal actually means People of 58 years and above cannot come to church. This is a demon that we must fight and defeat in the name of Jesus Christ. The agenda of the devil is frustrated in the name of Jesus. Let me read a scripture and then I wind up. Exodus chapter number 10, verse number 8 to 11. Exodus chapter number 10, verse number 8 through verse number 11. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So Moses and Aaron, we are brought back to Pharaoh. All right, he told them, go and worship the Lord your God. This is Pharaoh. Go and worship the Lord your God. This is an authority speaking to Moses. Go and worship the Lord your God. And then the same authority, Pharaoh, asked a question. But who exactly will be going with you? Moses responded, we will all go. And I pray that everybody responds right now. That we will all go to the house of God. 58 years and above, we will all go to the place of prayer. 13 years and below, we will all go. I love the way Moses described it and said, young and old. Our sons and daughters and our flocks and hearts must all join together in celebrating a festival to the Lord. Pharaoh, Pharaoh retorted, retorted, 
the Lord will certainly need to be with you if I let you take your little ones. I can see through your evil plans. Never! This is Pharaoh. Only the men may go and worship the Lord. Since that is what you requested. And Pharaoh threw them out of the palace. Now I am saying this. Saints of God. When we pray. We generate power. When we pray. We provoke heaven to do something. And I want us to agree. I want us to agree, saints of God. That, give me verse number, oh yeah, that's okay, verse number 11, it's okay. That the worship, and very specific, in the house of God. Not the house of Pastor Mbogo. In the house of God in Kisumu. In the house of God in Yala. In the house of God in Mombasa, it is not a place for men only. It is not a place for certain age. The house of God is a house for everyone. So every force of darkness that is coming up in a clever way to say these are the only people these are the only people it appears like another apartheid we say by the help of our god by the help of our god our teenagers are getting back to church our children are getting back to church Our mothers and our fathers are coming back to church in the name of Jesus Christ. And before I finish, let me say this. God is looking up to you and me. Don't be a spectator in the kingdom of God. As we move forward, as we wait on God, as we trust God for the end time revival, take note of the six points that I have presented in this session. And as you continue in prayer, my prayer for you, may God release more grace upon your life. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for causing us to arise from our spiritual slumber. Thank you for the spiritual awakening in our churches and in our ministries. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. I decree and declare in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, that everybody who has heard this audio or watched this video, they will become real ambassadors of Jesus. They will represent heaven on earth. Yes, Lord, we shall represent heaven here on earth. In our marketplace, we shall represent the kingdom of God. We give you praise and we give you honor. Lord, even as I speak a blessing upon the saints for keeping watch and being partakers in the Mombasa prayer conference, even for their prayers, even for their fastings. Lord, I pray that they all enjoy your cup. By the authority of God, I decree no counter attacks in the name of Jesus. We shall be well. We shall be healthy. We will have resources needed. Our ministries will expand. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 
Thank you so much. Saint Thomas. Amen. 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 Yeah. 